This is Jake with AG Russell Knives. Today we're going to go over the Sunfish 2. This is a new knife that we've uh, developed here. So the original knife is the Sunfish Texas Ranger. This was designed in 2010, but we remade it into the Sunfish 2. Now the big difference is here. Goldie said, or AG said that he wanted to remake the Sunfish, and Goldie said, sure, you could do that, but it needs to be a smaller knife. Now the original purpose of the knife is to be a rope knife, so if you had a big piece of rope and you need to cut through it quickly, like for sailors, they'd put the rope on there and use a, use a mallet or, or a, whatever is handy, really, to cut through the rope real fast. And so the blade is important to be big and wide. And so AG's big thing was it had to be nearly the same size blade. So we, we got pretty close. It's almost, almost the same size blade here. But we took over, over half an inch of handle away. And so we accomplished, accomplished that in a few different ways. If we look at this knife here, this is an old lockback from the 70s. You're losing a lot of space to the spring bar and the lock bar here. So what we did instead, here's a see-through example. So normally there's a pin right here for the hump in the lock bar. Instead of having the pin go all the way through, we have actually made two pins on either side. I don't know how well you can see that. Two pins on either side and that allows the blade to sit all the way down. So that allows us to get a much wider blade than normal sitting so we're saving a lot of space. Other two things we're doing is we have a striker pin and that allows the blade to, or that stops the blade before it hits the back end so you're not damaging the edge. And then we're also using a coil spring. Coil springs are more reliable and um, they also save a lot of space compared to the traditional um, bar spring there. And so that's how we're getting such a big blade into a, a much thinner handle. This knife right here, we have the blue, curly, blue oak. It is a burled oak that has been stabilized with a blue dye. And you get some very interesting patterns there. We also, and that's coming in at 125 retail. But we also have it in black G10. Smooth white bone. And a nice jigged bone. Both bones are coming in at $100, and the black G10 is at $95. And that's the Sunfish, too. Thanks for watching, guys. Perfect, thank you. All right. Okay, that was a great video. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. I'm going to just throw this in. I'm going to deviate from the standard script, put this uh, ahead because somebody might not want to 
listen to my whole take on this. But here is a lockback. And since we're talking about lockbacks, this uh, lock bar here, you may be able to appreciate, is down a little bit. It's a little bit down from being um, at the same height as this um, back of the knife. And here it's a little bit proud here, a little bit down. And if you open this knife, it doesn't lock, okay? So for my knife students out there, what's the first thing you do, okay? What's the very first thing you do when you have this situation? What do you check? What do you look at? You look at the notch to see if there's any lint in there, okay? So here we are, I'm looking at the notch and except for a little bit of uh, rust, it looks clean. So that was not the problem. So if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna hold this down now, okay, it locks up and it stays locked. Okay, I'm gonna unlock it. Okay, so it could be, what's the next problem? Broken spring, right? It's got a spring biasing this up, okay? And since this is down, that's a logical assumption, okay? So I just picked this up a little while ago. I was laying out uh, on one of my benches. And if you, if you push on this, this thing goes way down with no effort at all until it gets there. And then there's some spring to it. So I'm thinking the spring is okay, but it's bent or something. So let me look inside and there's the spring and it is intact. So I don't know if you see it. So it could be just a real poor spring. This is a craftsman knife. You'd expect it to be pretty good. So we're going to try a little oil. But you know, you can see there's very little resistance here. I don't know what could be the problem here. I don't know. I guess it's just uh, a real mushy spring that's down there. I don't know whether to take it apart and try and fix it or that's a lot of trouble since it's pinned. So uh, I think I'll keep using it for what it is, a rusty knife. Still got some edge to it. Probably not bad steel. This is Craftsman USA. And it says... Soft, soft grip, soft grip. I don't know why they call it soft grip. It's pretty hard. Uh, well, there's a mystery I was going to solve, and uh, I, I either did or didn't. Uh, you decide. Okay, I appreciate the great demonstration we had by uh, the folks at A.G. Russell. And uh, now I'd like to discuss a little bit about my take on the mechanism. And if you're not interested, thank you very much for watching. And uh, see you on the next one, I guess. But when I first saw this mechanism, I some, just something struck me about it. I was impressed. And I kept thinking also, wait a minute, why am I impressed? Well, I'm thinking that... It's nice, but it's not a big deal. But actually, it is a big deal. And this is something that um, it just sort of strikes you like, wow, that's stupid. Wait a minute. No, it's brilliant. The lockback mechanism has been around for hundreds of years. And this is a new twist on it. The lockback me mechanism is... Uh, a very strong mechanism and what these guys have done 
is they take it an ordinary lock bar and that has a basically a pivot running through it and it's got a latch on one end, the front end, and then this tail, and then of course there's a spring here. But what they have done was take this design, this concept, and route this out. They probably just simply took a milling cutter, routed this out, so now there's a space. But if you look on the side view, of course, the routed out area doesn't go all the way through. So you have this metal here for strength, and of course the other side, and then on the back of the lock bar, there's still this uh, metal. And what they're going to do with this is they're going to allow the blade to come down into here, this space, and come out. So part of the blade, the blade bevel, the cutting edge is going to go into that and therefore you're going to get a much wider blade per handle uh, height or width. And uh, what they had done with this is the problem with this is this is a lever and you have to have a pin going through here so to act as a lever. So having this blade come down into this cavity precludes your ability to put a pin through there and act like the fulcrum point of the lever. But what they had done and actually uh, on the side view They actually had come up a little bit like that. They put a hole here, so in other words, there's a pivot coming through this side, and it's peened off, and there's a pivot coming through this side, and it's peened off, and the blade resides right in this cavity. So that's pretty neat. If you look at that knife, that, there is no other knife with the dimensions that that has. The, the height of the handle is much uh, smaller compared to how, how wide that blade is. So it's, so it's pretty neat. So I think it's very innovative and uh, I just wanted to put that in that, that, that my impression when I first saw it was was somewhat amazement. I didn't really know how to process it. And then the more I thought about it, I said, man, this is a really neat idea. So that's that. Now, I kind of got into YouTube videos because uh, my kids said, why don't you uh, promote your book by making a YouTube video? And I, and I said, well, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, but how do you make them? And they told me, you know, go ahead and do this. And my first YouTube video, I was plugging my book. And I have it plugged my books in a while. I mean, somebody just asked me, they asked me a question and I said, well, you know, this mechanism is like this and like this, you know, and by the way, you know, I, this exact point I discussed very thoroughly in my book or something. And he goes, what, you wrote, you wrote books on, on, uh, on knife mechanisms? <laughs> well, it looks like I'm slipping here. I got to do a shameless plug in my book. Anyway, uh, this is the first uh, book that I wrote, Knife Mechanisms, just for the fun of it, and uh, it takes a, a lot of history of mechanisms and how they came about, and uh, a lot of um, assistant opener. Uh, some guy said, how can we put so many assistant opener? I said, well, you know, at the time, they were the hottest thing going. So uh, I got a push button automatic in there. Um, the uh, using a through pin, uh, but there was so many more uh, knife mechanisms I want to get wanted to talk about. And I just sort of ran out of space. Uh, that I later came out with book two, and this is really loaded with uh, automatics. In fact, uh, we got A.G. Russell in here uh, talking about one of his inventions. 
So uh, it's a lot of variety, and uh, I've got uh, it's a how it's not a how-to book, but I've got some uh, charts and stuff in there with uh, uh, tap and drill sizes, decimal equivalents, things like that. Just kind of help you out because a lot of guys say they keep this book in their shop, and they this is kind of like their break book when when they're when they want to take a break and you know. Uh, just sort of sit down and rest a little bit. The, a lot of guys say they pull up this book and look at it. Now, it's not necessarily a how-to book, but if you make knives, uh, there's, if you already know how to make knives, you, you, could, you could probably get a lot of information out of this book. It'll, it'll be really good. Now, um, I don't ask for any donations, uh, there's no advertisements on my videos. I think I saw some advertisements on the videos. Where they came from, I don't know. I'm, if they're there and YouTube wants to make some money, fine, because I'm glad to give back to YouTube. Uh, but I didn't, uh, I didn't, I'm getting zero on those things. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting nothing. Okay. So I could use some money. Uh, like, you know, I, accidentally put the Norton high aggressive uh, uh, abrasive wheel in my uh, in my DVD player by accident and, and so I have a real dilemma there look at it. this is these things are just, uh, almost the same size so I mean, it was an honest mistake no but seriously uh, if you would like um, uh, to really learn a lot about knives really increase your your knowledge of knife mechanisms uh this this could do it for you i mean that one of the reasons i wrote these books is there was at the time there was like no information anywhere on knife mechanisms i just really want to learn so uh i went to a lot of classes did a lot of research came up uh, with this there's uh profiles of a lot of famous knife makers in there and um you know there's there's so much information like on YouTube uh, and 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 the web that it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, people talk about what's the strongest lock mechanism, and they say, uh, "Oh, it's absolutely the uh, the liner lock," or they say, "Oh, it's the it's the frame lock. It's the strongest lock mechanism." Well, you know, it's a great mechanism, um, but. You know, I did some testing and all, and it's in there. Other people have done testing too, but I actually did my own research, so you might you might find uh, that interesting. And uh, I also uh, did an article in Blade Magazine, uh, me and uh, Jay Kobach, uh, on the uh, line lock mechanism. Actually, I think it was this, the uh, detent pin. But anyway, uh, it was reviewed by... You know, the guy who invented it. So I thought that was pretty neat. So uh, I have a lot of fun with this stuff. I hope you have fun too. Um, and I appreciate it. If you want to take a look at those books, you come to uh, my website, um, knife mechanisms at uh, gmail.com. If you have any uh, questions, but it's also sold in a lot of places. Okay, thanks a lot.